So hey guys, and we are now on the chapter four of the fundamentals of computing course. So in this chapter, we will be discussing the different computer input and output devices. Okay, so first we have the different computer input devices. Of course, the input devices will gonna help us to give instructions to the computer. So first we have the keyboard. Of course, the keyboard is the most common and very popular input device, which helps to input data to the computer. So the layout of the, the keyboard is like that of traditional typewriter, although there are some additional keys provided for, for performing additional functions, okay? And also the keyboard has typing keys. So the typing keys, these keys includes the letter keys from A to Z and digit keys from um, zero to uh, nine, yeah? Which uh, generally give the same layout as that of typewriters. And of course, the keyboard also has numeric keypad. So it is used to enter the numeric data or cursor movement. So generally, it consists of a set of 17 keys that are laid out laid out in the same configuration used by the most ad adding uh, machines and calculators. And also a keyboard has function keys and control keys. So the function keys, the 12 function keys are present on the keyboard which are arranged in the row at the top of the keyboard. So each function key has a unique meaning and is used for some specific purpose. And we have also the control keys. So the control keys, these keys provide cursor and screen control. So it includes four directional arrow keys. Control keys are, uh, also includes home, end, insert, delete, page up, page down, control, alternate, and escape. Okay, so those are different control keys and functions keys. Next is the special purpose keys. So keyboard also con uh, contains some special purpose, uh, purpose keys such as enter, shift, cap caps lock, num lock, space bar, tab, and print screen. Okay. So next, mouse. Of course, mouse is the most popular pointing device, okay? It is a very famous cursor control, having a small palm size with a round ball at, at, at its base. So which sends the movement of the mouse and sends the corresponding signals to the CPU when the mouse buttons are pressed. Generally, it has two buttons called the left and the right button and a wheel is present between the buttons. So a mouse can be used to control the position of the cursor on the screen, but it cannot be used to enter text into the computer. So what device is used to enter text in the computer? That would be the keyboard, okay? And then the mouse is the pointing device. Next is we also have joystick. So the joystick is also a pointing device. Okay, which is used to move the cursor of position on the monitor screen. It is a stick having a, sp a spherical ball at its both lower and upper ends. So the lower spherical ball moves in a socket. The joystick can be moved in all four directions. So the functions of the use joystick is similar to that of a mouse. It is mainly used in the computer-aided designing or CAD and then playing computer games. Okay, so I hope you guys have seen a joystick already. Next is the light pen. So the light pen is a pointing device, now similar to a pen. It is used to select, um, used to select a displayed menu item or draw pictures on the monitor screen. So it consists of a photo cell and an optical system 
place in a small tube. So when the tip of a light pen is moved over the monitor screen and the pen button is pressed, its photo cell sensing element detects the screen location and sends the corresponding signal to the CPU. So as you may have noticed, there are a lot of mobile phones, no? mobile phones ha having light pen. No? Mm -hmm. Galaxy Note, so something like those devices. Okay, we also have trackball. Okay, the trackball is an input device that is mostly used in notebook or laptop computer. So instead of a mouse. So this is a ball which is half inserted and by moving fingers on the ball, the pointer can be moved. Okay, so just use this ball in here. And then the, again, as what I have said, the, the pointer will be moved when you move the trackball. So since the whole device is not moved, a trackball requires uh, less space than a mouse. So a trackball comes of various shapes like a ball, a button, or a square. So you don't have to move your mouse, just you know, move the trackball, okay? Next is we also have digitizer. Okay, so the digitizer is an input device which converts um, analog information into digital form. So digitizer can convert a signal from the television or camera into a series of numbers that could be stored in the computer. They can be used by the computer to create a picture of whatever the camera had, point, had been pointed at. And a digitizer is also known as tablet or graphics tablet, as it converts graphics and pictorial data into binary inputs. So a graphic tablet as digitizer is also used for fine works of drawing and image manipulation applications. So this can also be used again for drawings, okay, or image manipulation. Next is the microphone. Of course, it is an input device to input sound that is then stored in a digital form. So the microphone is used for various applications such as adding sound to multimedia presentation or for mixing music or like this, okay? Next is we also have a magnetic ink card reader or MICR. So the MICR input device is generally used in banks as there are large number of checks to be processed every day. So the bank's code number, um, number and check number are printed on the checks with a special type of ink that contains particle of magnetic material that are machine readable. Okay, so this reading process is called magnetic ink character recognition or MICR. So the main advantage of MICR is that it is fast and less error prone. Okay, that's one. Next. We also have an optical character reader or OCR. So the OCR is an input device used to read printed texts. Okay, so OCR scans the text optically, character by character, converts them into a machine readable code, and stores the text on the system memory. Okay, so how cool is that? Okay, so this is a sample. Okay, we also have barcode readers. So uh, as you may have observed, when you go out and, you know, do your some do some groceries then um the products has just barcodes then the cashier will just you know scan the barcode so the barcode reader is a device used for reading barcode barcoded data okay so barcoded data is generally used in labeling uh, labeling goods numbering the books etc so it may be hand handheld scanner or it can be embedded in a stationary scanner so the barcode reader scans a barcode image and converts it into an alphanumeric value, 
which is then fed to the computer that the barcode reader is connected to, okay? And we also have optical mark reader or OMR. So OMR is a special type of optical scanner used to recognize the type of mark made by pen or pencil. Okay, so it is used where one out of a few alternative is to be selected and marked. It is specially, it is specially used for checking the answers, uh, answer sheets of examinations having multiple choice questions. Okay, so that is an optical mark reader. Okay, so those are the different computer input devices. Now let's move forward with the different computer output devices. So we have first is the monitor. Of course, monitors or commonly called as visual display unit or VDU are the main output device of a computer. So it forms images from tiny dots called pixels that are arranged in a rectangular form the sharpness of the image depends upon the number of pixels. So there are two different kinds of uh, monitors. We have the old one, the CRT, and the, or the cathode ray tube, and now we, all, we have this flat panel display. So this is a sample of a CRT or the cathode ray, cathode ray tube monitor. So the CRT display is made up of small picture elements called pixels. The smaller the pixels, the better the image clarity or resolution. So it takes um, more than one illuminated pixel to form a whole character, such as the letter E in the word help. So a finite number of characters can be displayed on the screen at once. So the screen can be divided into a series of character boxes, fixed location on the screen where a standard character can be placed. Most screens are capable of displaying 80 characters of data horizontally and 25 lines vertically. So there are some disadvantages of CRT. So these are the old monitors. Of course, it has large in size, as you can see in the image, and also it has a high power consumption. Okay. okay, now we have the flat panel display monitor. So the flat panel display refers to a class of video devices that have reduced volume, weight, and power requirement in comparison to the CRT. So you can hang them on the walls or wear them on your wrists. Current uses of flat panel displays includes you know, calculators, video games, monitors, laptop, laptop computers, and graphic display. So the flat panel display is divided into two categories. We have immersive display, which are the devices that convert electrical energy into light. So for example, we have plasma panel and light emitting diodes or LED, LED. And then we also have the non-immersive displays. So non-immersive displays are used optical effects to convert sunlight or light from some other source into graphics patterns. So for non-immersive displays, we have this LCD or liquid crystal device. Okay, so next output device is printers. So a printer is an output device which is used to print information on paper. Okay, so there are two types of printers. We have the impact printers and non-impact printers. The impact printers, um, impact printers print the characters by striking them on the ribbon, which is then pressed on the paper. Okay, so characteristic of impact printers are the following. Very low consumable costs. It's very noisy useful for bulk printing due to low costs, and there is a physical contact with the paper to produce an image. So these printers, you know, the impact printers, are characterized into two types. We have um, the so-called character printers and then the line printers. So the character printers, character printers are the printers which 
print one character at a time. Okay, so these are further divided into two types. We have the dot matrix or um, the MP, and also we have this this Daisy wheel. So the dot matrix in the market, one of the most popular printers is the dot matrix printer. So these printers are popular because of their ease of printing and economical price. So each character printed is in the form of pattern or of dots and head consists of a matrix of pins of size 5 by 7, 7 by 9, etc., which come out to form a character, which is why it is called that matrix printer. Okay, so the advantages, of course, it is inexpensive and widely used, and other language characters can be printed. The disadvantage are uh, the disadvantages are of course slow speed and it has a poor quality. So that is the that matrix. Next is the Daisy wheel. So the Daisy wheel, okay. So head is lying on a wheel, wheel and pins corresponding to characters are like petals of Daisy flower. Okay, so which is why it is called Daisy wheel printer. So these printers are generally used for word processing in offices that require a few letters to be sent here and there with very nice quality. So the advantages, first advantage, of course, more reliable than the MP or the dot matrix, and it has a better quality, and fonts, are char fonts of character can be easily changed. The disadvantage, it is slower than the MP, it's very noisy and more expensive than the MP or the matrix. Okay, so next is we also have line printers. So line printers are printer which print one line at a time. So there are two types of line printers. We have drum printer and chain printer. So for the drum printer, it is like a drum in shape, hence it is called drum printer, okay? So the surface of the drum is divided into a number of tracks. Total tracks are equal to the size of the paper. So uh, for example, for a paper with uh, one, three, 132 characters, drum will have 132 tracks. So a character, a character set is embossed on the track. Different character sets available in the market are 48 character set, 64, and we also have this 96 character set. One rotation of drum prints one line. So drum printers are fast in speed and can print 300 to 2,000 lines per minute. Okay, so the advantages, of course, it, is, it has very high speed. The disadvantages, um, it is very expensive and characters fonts cannot be changed. Okay, so there's only, you know, default font used. Next is we have this chain printer. So in this printer, a chain of character sets is used. Hence, of course, it is called a hence printer. So a standard character set may have uh, 48, 64, or 96 characters. The advantages of this chain printer, um, character fonts can be changed easily and the different languages can be used with the same printer. The disadvantages, or the disadvantage, this is a very noisy printer. Okay, let's move on with the non-impact printers. Non-impact printers print the characters without using the ribbon, okay? So these printers print a complete page at a time. Thus, they are also called as a page printers. So uh, these printers are, uh, are of two types. We have laser and we also have inkjet. So the characters of non-impact printers, faster than impact printers, they are not noisy, okay? And high quality support and high quality, and also it supports many fonts in different sizes. Um, allow me to correct this one. Okay. 
Yan. Next. Okay, so the laser printers, these are non-impact page printers. They use laser lights to produce the dots needed to form the characters to be printed on the page. Okay, the advantages, of course, it has a very high speed, very high quality output, good graphics quality, and it supports painy fonts and different character size. The disadvantages uh, are the following. It's very, you know, it's expensive and it cannot be used to produce multiple copies of a document in a single printer, printing. Okay, so that is the laser printers. Next, we have the inkjet, okay? The inkjet printers. Inkjet printers are non-impact character printers based on a relatively new technology. So they print characters by spraying small drop of ink into paper, okay? So inkjet printers produce high quality output with presentable features. So they make less noise because no hammering is done and these have many styles of printing modes available. So color printing is also possible. Then some models of ancient printers can produce multiple copies of printing. And also um, its advantages are the following, uh, high quality printing and more reliable. The disadvantages, expensive as the cost per page is high. And it is slow as compared to laser printer. So, I think we have discussed the different input and output devices, and I hope you guys have learned something. So, if I am too fast, again, feel free to replay the video, rewatch the video, and if you have any questions and clarifications, feel free to reach me out through the Facebook Messenger. So, that would be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. God bless and thank you.